6 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. The Foreign Minister says Pakistan and Japan have full potential to increase bilateral trade and investment in diverse sectors for mutual benefit. The Minister for Planning and Development has emphasized the need to enhance the country's exports for economic stability and growth. Post Hajj flight operation to bring back Pakistani Hujjaj from Saudi Arabia began today. Four security personnel were martyred in a terrorist attack at a check post in Shirani district of Balochistan today. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the occupation authorities have intensified restrictions in the garb of security for the ongoing Hindu pilgrimage Amarnath Yatra. The National Disaster Management Authority has issued an advisory to ensure preparedness for the first monsoon spell forecast from tomorrow. And now the news in detail. The Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari says Pakistan and Japan have the potential to increase bilateral trade in diverse sectors for mutual benefit. He was speaking at a function organized by the Pakistani diaspora in Tokyo today. The Foreign Minister said both the countries can benefit from investment in agriculture and livestock. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said the incumbent government is working on economic diplomacy to bring prosperity in the country. He said Pakistan can learn from Japan's advancement in information technology and other fields. The foreign minister said during his meeting with Japanese leadership and entrepreneurs, he will urge them to enhance trade and investment in Pakistan. He said Pakistan has over 65% population of youth and we can exploit this human resource through skills-based education and training. The foreign minister urged the Pakistani overseas, particularly businessmen, to play their role for increase in trade between the two countries and also strengthening of bilateral relations. The Minister for Planning and Development, Ahsan Iqbal, has stressed the need to increase exports of the country by utilizing all the available resources. Addressing a news conference in Narawal today, he said five main fields of economy, including agriculture, information technology, manpower, minerals and industries can play a vital role in the increase of exports and deal with the economic crisis. The planning minister said Pakistan has the lowest GDP growth rate in the region. In the region, and by paying special attention to small and medium enterprises, we can achieve the target. He said we must increase the tax to GDP ratio for self sufficiency. The post Hajj flight operation to bring back over 80,000 Pakistani Hujjaj from Saudi Arabia under the government scheme began today. Radio Pakistan's correspondent Javed Iqbal reports from Jeddah that the first two flights departed from Jeddah Airport for Pakistan today. For airlines, including the Pakistan International Airlines, Air Blue, Serene Air, and Saudi Airlines will work together to facilitate the safe repatriation of Pakistani Hujjaj. Returning Hujjaj are being provided five liters of Abe Zamzam upon their arrival at the Pakistan airports. Post Hajj flights from Makkah to Medina also began today, while the first Hajj flight from Medina to Pakistan will leave on Wednesday. A total of 38,000 pilgrims will be sent from Medina, while the last Hajj flight from Medina will reach home on the 2nd of next month. This is Radio Pakistan. Four security personnel were martyred in a terrorist attack at a check post in Dhannasar area of Shirani district in Balochistan today. According to security sources, one terrorist was also killed in retaliatory fire. Meanwhile, the governor of Balochistan, Abdul Malik, and Chief Minister Mir Abdul Kudus Pazinjo have strongly condemned the terrorist attack on the check post. 
they also expressed sympathy with the bereaved families of the martyrs. Three terrorists were killed in an intelligence-based operation of security forces in Tehsil Kolachi of Dera Ismail Khan today. The terrorists were involved in heinous crimes, including attack on security forces. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the occupation authorities have further intensified restrictions in the garb of security for the ongoing Hindu pilgrimage Amarnath Jatra. According to Kashmir Media Service, the Kashmiris will continue to face hardships in the name of raids, crackdowns, checking and frisking till Yatra culminates on 31st of August. The Modi government has deployed 60,000 additional paramilitary personnel across the territory to create an environment of fear and terror during these two months. The deployment is in addition to tens of thousands of the troops already present in the held territory. Meanwhile, the Indian troops launched a cordon in search operation in Dahi in the Bidharti area of Punch district today. The Indian police arrested one innocent Kashmiri youth during a raid at Batmalu bus stand in Sirinagar. Meanwhile, the old parties, Hurriyat Conference leaders, including Sayyid Bashir Andarabi, Khwaja Firdos, Abdus Samad in Kalabi, and Muhammad Yusuf Nakash, in their statements in Sirinagar, expressed concern over the increasing human rights violations by the Indian troops in Kashmir. They criticized the United Nations for its failure to enforce its own resolutions on the Kashmir dispute. People's Democratic Party President Mahbuba Mufti has urged the visiting Chief Justice of India, Dhananjaya Yashwan Chandrachu, to hear the petitions challenging the abrogation of Article 370. She also asked him to look into the issue of detention of innocent Kashmiri youth languishing in different jails. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation has called for collective measures to prevent acts of desecration of Holy Quran and religious hatred. The group of 57 Islamic countries at an emergency meeting in Jeddah today also called for the implementation of international law to stop the despicable acts of burning of the Holy Quran. The OIC Secretary General Hussein Brahim Taha said we must send constant reminders to the international community regarding the urgent application of international law, which clearly prohibits any advocacy of religious hatred. Iran has announced to hold off sending its ambassador to Sweden in protest over the burning of Holy Quran outside a mosque in Stockholm. The Iranian Foreign Ministry summoned Sweden's Shazad de Fer in Tehran to condemn the incident. Palestine has strongly condemned the growing violence of the Israeli settlers in the occupied West Bank. Palestinian Foreign Ministry, in a statement, urged the international community to list the settlers' group as terrorist organizations and pressure Israeli government to dismantle them and dry up their financial resources. It also called on the international community to take a real and practical position toward the terrorism practiced by the Israeli settlers. The spillways of Tarbela Dam were opened for five hours today, according to the Provincial Disaster Management Authority, Khaber Pakhtunkhwa. The water flow at the Indus downstream will, can, will remain 250,000 cusec today. People residing near the downstream and tourists have been asked to avoid going to water flow areas. The National Disaster Management Authority has issued an advisory to all federal and provincial departments concerned to ensure preparedness for the first monsoon spell forecast from tomorrow till Saturday. The advisory report said rain, wind, thunder showers with few heavy falls and hailstorms are expected in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Punjab, Gilgit, Baltistan, Azad Kashmir. It further said heavy rainfall may cause urban flooding in low-lying areas of Islamabad, Rawalpindi, Peshawar, Gujranwala, Lahore from Tuesday to Friday. Heavy rainfall may trigger landslides in vulnerable areas of Mari, Galiat, Gilgit, Baltistan, Kashmir and hilly areas of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Heavy rainfall may cause flash flooding in the hill torrents of Dera Ghazi Khan and adjoining areas of northeast Balochistan, also from Thursday to Saturday. 
And finally, the weather report. Mainly hot and humid weather is expected in most parts of the country, while very hot conditions are likely in central and southern plain areas during the next 12 hours. However, rain, thunder showers is expected at isolated places in Kashmir, Upper Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Gilgit Baltistan. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk. And you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.